So yeah, it looks like it's a lot chillier there than here. Oh uh, yeah, it's pretty. It's uh, maybe it's only like five degrees. That's not crazy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're only dealing with uh, record heat here. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh yeah, because I, I saw something like um, it was forty-seven. Oh no, not not forty-seven. One hundred and eighteen degrees Fahrenheit high or something. Yeah, that's what it's supposed so to be supposed tomorrow. To to. About one hundred sixteen today. And that's like forty-seven degrees or something, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so, 47, 48, something like that, right in right that's between. Sad. Mm, that doesn't yeah. happen uh, over here very often. <laughs> that never happens here. It'll be 10 degrees above our record. Oh, shoot, it's far out. That's yeah, crazy. right now, I think it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon. It's 110 or something right now. Yeah, brutal, brutal. Yeah, that's like proper summer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you get some, like maybe 40 degrees. Uh you know yeah not 47 <laughs> yeah yeah we're staying out of it for sure <laughs> yeah, totally. yeah i think that'd be like currently 43 right now 43c so rank rank yeah. <laughs> so uh we're among the stones here with uh ben Cosi. so for those who don't know who you are tell us about yourself uh well i'm my name's ben Cosi. um and that's about the length of it. I, I guess I've been a climber for a long time. I've climbed maybe for uh, 23 years, rock climbing in Australia and around the place. And um, and maybe in the last couple of months to a year, almost, not quite a year, I've, I've kind of started dabbling with some grip stuff. Um, thanks to Joe Hodgson's Instagram account, got me intrigued. Um, and a friend of mine who was a powerlifter or is a powerlifter um, got me intrigued on how I can maybe apply some of that stuff to my climbing training. Yeah. And so here we are doing some grip stuff. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Do you uh, plan on competing in any grip contest or anything or just primarily using it to uh, accompany your climbing? No, yeah, well, I think, um, yeah, no, I'm psyched on it. Actually, the more the more um, I slip down the rabbit hole, the more I'm down the rabbit hole. Um, last year, Joe had the King Kong grip contest yeah. at uh, his house, and I was going to go to that, but I hadn't done anything like, and I didn't know anything about it. And I actually have never met Joe either, um, but we just know we moved in similar circles maybe 20 years ago, so <laughs> we know of each other, and. Um, and so I didn't end up doing that. And then um, he was going to host it again this year, 2021. And um, yeah, I, I was psyched on it. And I got the, all the bits and pieces. I, I haven't got the crusher yet, but all the most of the bits and pieces that are going to be in the competition. So that'll be the first comp. And probably the first time I meet people who do grip stuff as well. <laughs> so at the moment, I'm, I'm full cyber, cyber grip stuff. Yeah. Probably a lot of people in the 74 kilogram division that are interested in seeing what you're going to do. Oh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I know um, Tom, one of the people um, in the, like, he's a he's a, a grip lift, uh, arm lifter or whatever in Sydney, a friend of Joe. Uh, he's in, he's in, oh, no, he's in the division down for me. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. So uh, last year he competed in the, he, last year he did compete in the 74, but I think this year he may wind up coming in at the 66 or whatever because uh, he's lost oh. some weight oh yeah 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 and like because i think we're quite different heights as well i'm i think i'm like 12 centimeters taller than him so um it, it would be a struggle for me to get down to say 73 and a half uh drive to joe's not having had breakfast <laughs> <laughs> and then i have to smash some brekkie and then i'll be able to compete i might i might find that i'm a bit powered down so i think i feel better when i'm about 70 74 and a half to 76 thereabouts so i see you know that's normally the way with climbing anyway but at the moment i'm at 74 and a half okay yeah you'll definitely so, do pretty well yeah yeah exactly i could probably pop. But that said i had two two nights with pizza so i might be about 70 79 now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i plan on i'm hoping to come down to the 83 kilo class for king kong Oh, right. Okay. 83. So that would be, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not, familiar. so there's a 74, 83, and then a 90 something. Right? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. And Joe, 
is Joe Hodgson in like the the heavyweight division or something like that? I think he's in the hundred kilo division. Yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm super new to all the categories and stuff. So everyone talking about pound for pound, I'm like, what does pound for pound mean? That big guy's stronger than a little guy. End of story. But apparently, it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and hand yeah. size plays a big role the higher up you get into classes there's you get guys with you know eight and a half inch nine inch hands and that yeah. even happens in you know at 190 pounds or something when you run into those guys so yeah for sure it's like with anything i guess people um uh yeah the the features of the body make a big difference yeah some of the guys on the um agc we're talking about adam adam glass's hands as being really massive on the uh rolling grip thing or little rolly handle thing um and yeah talking about how it's an advantage which it makes sense <laughs> then have to cock your wrist is hard <laughs> yeah for sure his hands are actually only about eight inches though he's uh he hasn't, doesn't have quite the biggest hands out there jed johnson's hands are like eight and three quarter and then you run into some guys with like nine inch hands out there yeah yeah it's yeah well, I, i'd never been prompted to measure my hands until recently and and yeah, uh, yeah I, i've got nine and a half inch hands like from from there to there so but yeah that's crazy kilos though <laughs> <sighs> that's crazy you'll do really good on the fat bar implements then yeah yeah i love the fat bar stuff i've got like um i just got an axle the other day and all that sort of thing and they're fun to play with hey mm. yeah so your fingers touch together on the axle then probably the giant hands oh on the axle yeah definitely easily that's yeah crazy. Um, same, same. Like, with, do you guys have the bear grip thing? Okay. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's just a little bit. You see? Yeah. Was that a? Was that a sixty millimeter? Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm. That's ridiculous. <laughs> You guys seen these ones these bear grip things i have seen those i haven't I've gotten to hold on to them in person man it looks oh. like a pretty nice roller yeah it's really nice that was my first first um grip implement <laughs> okay is that australian no no it's russian of it's all a russian implement okay yeah that makes sense the bear yeah 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 russian bear which it might be a koala you know <laughs> there you go <laughs> yeah yeah they've have, they have some pretty good grip you know they're holding on to Holding on those trees all day long. Hey, smashing the leaves, yeah. <laughs> Just sleeping, holding on to gripping things while they sleep, you know? It's impressive. You gotta catch them slippery fish too, so you gotta definitely hold on to those. <laughs> exactly. Good times. <laughs> so uh, what motivates you to compete in climbing? And oh, like grip sport now. Oh in grip sport, um well I'll, I'll say grip sport, um I don't know, uh, just to see how how strong my hands can get and just having another way to test myself, similar to a lot of things to do with climbing, but um, it's very focused focused on the elbow down and I've always been psyched on um, fingers, finger training and strength training uh, for climbing and, um, and yeah, this is just a, another way to push it a little bit and um, the fact that there's little competitions um, popping up is just a way to keep keep motivated and keep focused on like um the the kind of end goal or whatever of just i don't know getting stronger you know being consistent yeah yeah and j it's just see seeing what other people are doing is what i like with the the grip thing um is you can kind of see like oh this russian guy did 100 kilos on the bear grip oh man how can i get to that like that's going to be awesome for climbing or um or uh, you know the little big horn you see some person in Massachusetts and uh, he's hauling 115 kilos and it's just yeah inspiring yeah so what what makes me keen for competition I don't know really probably just meeting some people uh, that are into the same thing as me yeah because like I said I haven't really talked to anyone in the flesh about it <laughs> yeah. yeah I think that's a big part of it for us too um, I have other avenues that are primary um I'm martial arts primary for me to grip but I mm. am excited to get down to Texas and meet some of the big names down there we're competing in King Kong at Adam Glass's place so we're going to meet a lot of you know oh. elite level gripsters there so we're pretty oh, stoked that, about that yeah that'd and, be fun. Uh, yeah I mean you guys have you know when you get together for King Kong you're running into some pretty elite level dudes there too so that's pretty cool yeah 
yeah, no, it should be pretty, pretty keen. Like I think everyone um, on the on the AGC it's just like a bunch of guys chatting on Instagram, basically. But um, but yes, yeah, it, it'll be fun to meet up and, and do that, and yeah, just just meet the people that you kind of been interacting with for the last year, and yeah. But there's some strong guys like um, there's well Glenn and Glenn and is it, I don't know if you know them, but bloody yeah, Glenn Hunter, yeah, he's a monster, big oh, monster. Dude. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, no. Nah, so it's quite quite different where where people are coming from and and coming in all all keen on grip, but you know different histories. So you just yeah, it's it's cool. It's funny. It's not like a normal sport where everyone kind of looks the same and they all have a similar backstory. Yeah. Oh, you powerlifter. Oh, I'm a climber. Oh, you know, you're a single mum with a daughter or whatever. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I kind of think of it like the uh, Olympic bobsled teams, where it's always like, oh, this guy failed the track, or this guy, you know, he was in football and didn't make it, but you know, he can push a sled really hard. So yeah, you got awesome. him. yeah, 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 for sure. <laughs> That's how the bowling community is too. I mean, you get a lot of like failed pitchers and baseball that turn to bowling or. Guys that got a knee blew out and played football, and they're like, yeah, we could throw a ball down a lane, and we got good at that. Some people yeah, yeah. are like champion horseshoe players. It's crazy. What did you – champion horseshoe players? Uh, you get a horseshoe and you throw it at a peg like a certain distance away, yeah. Yeah, cool. One. Imagine being a champion horseshoe thrower. <laughs> one, one of the elite bowlers is a champion horseshoe player too. Yeah, right. Oh, wow. <laughs> Funny it's funny, you know, in America, honestly, if you go to a campground, you can almost always find a horseshoe throwing area. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Oh, oh cool. That's cool. Yeah. For some reason, it's just, it's always there. It's a thing. <laughs> yeah. BYO horseshoes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bring your own horseshoes. <laughs> but don't bend them and snap them. You actually have to throw them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, good. Cool. <laughs> So Ben, what do you uh, consider one of your greatest athletic achievements? Well, I don't know. It would probably be, <coughs> pardon me, in climbing. Um, oh, maybe a few routes that I've done. Like, um, there's a, a famous, a fairly famous route called Gaia on in England. Um, so this is like a gritstone climb, and the gritstone is well known for having really poor protection so it's quite dangerous climbs and I, I did the first solo so with no rope of this particular climb it's not massively high but it's just um pretty sketchy uh easy to fall and if you did fall without a rope it's not not ideal <laughs> okay. wow yeah like yeah so that's Cap Tan over here yeah 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 El Cap I've been up like free rider on El Cap which is what that um Alec guy followed and stuff okay. yeah and half dome, like they're not like necessarily um, really difficult, like athletic achievements. Like say the north, the the face of half dome, but it's just so awesome. Like they're some of the best things I've done yet for sure. Mm. That's awesome, yeah. man. Valley, yeah, awesome. that dangerous stuff. I don't know about that, man. That's risk yeah. involved with working out is crazy. I, I feel like that when we're doing the steel bending, and you feel like your hands about to snap or levering yeah, the yeah. axe to your forehead that's another crazy one <laughs> yeah fully fully that's fun as well <laughs> yeah i don't know i wouldn't like it to have a block splitter come into my forehead <laughs> but it's fun with it <laughs> have you gotten to ice climbing at all no nah, no nah, because australia like we don't really we have a little bit of ice but um it's quite a long way away from where we are and it's really hit and miss ice so it's it's not really much of a thing in Australia, but in, in America and Canada and um, it is obviously in, in Europe, but yeah, no, I've never, never done any. Hey, yeah. It'd be interesting. Those big kind of teetery chandeliers that are right. owning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's yeah, that crazy too, man. That's, that's wild. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. Right. Hopefully it doesn't <laughs> warm up soon. <laughs> no, I think that's it. And when, when it does start warming up, you can kind of hear that it's not not going to be there for very long. <laughs> so, get up, better hurry up. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Yeah, but when they when they collapse and someone's on it, it looks pretty messy, like far out. Wow. I don't know yeah. if they've seen videos or photos of that, like of 
those big chandelier things collapsing with someone on it looks like carnage. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. I have to look that up. I have not seen that. Oh, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. But it's amazing, like, people get away, okay, I think, because there's snow at the bottom a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> now, only ice climbing, mostly bouldering and sport climbing is what I do, with okay. a bit of you know, traditional climbing as well. But, yeah, which is more an emphasis on um, strength and, and performance. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, on the opposite spectrum, what's your greatest blunder or injury? Yeah. Um, well, I, I fell off a cliff, like a 12-meter cliff once. That's probably my biggest blunder and, and injury. <laughs> I was I was walking along. I'd just done this really, like this, a new climb on Taipan Wall and the Grampians. And I was walking along um, a ledge, you kind of, you have the ground and then a, a ledge about 12 meters up. And that's where the climbs start off. And you can kind of walk up over here, up onto the base of the climbs up here. And I was walking along and I got my toe caught on this little chicken head thing, which is just a phrase for like a little hook of rock. And um, instead of walking along the ledge, I was like off balance going off, off the ledge and <laughs> just to explain what I mean by chicken head, you know, on shoes, like you have this fabric fit here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The chicken head just snagged on that, tripped me up. And I was going over, going over, going. Oh, oh. Yeah. Go, and I was going to go head, head first for sure. But then I kind of leapt up on, on the one leg and kind of donkey kicked my, <laughs> my right leg behind me to free it up. And then I managed to kind of fall. Um, yeah. That, that distance with my with my legs kind of straight down for the most part. And then I just went, oof, oh, and hit my head, got knocked out, had a seizure. We're in the bush, so they had to um, call the ambulance, obviously. And uh, it was handy because just down the road, um, the Victorian um, ambulance service were having a... Um, what, what a get together not not a get together but um a thing when the companies come together um okay. you know whatever a conference or whatever yeah <laughs> yeah conference <laughs> a barbecue and um and so they got all and so all these ambos came out uh from the conference and um uh, giving me my green whistles and stuff and i was really off chop so and then i got a helicopter ride to melbourne and yeah that was about it like i hurt, hurt my shoulder and, and got a, a hole in my leg uh bruising on my brain and down the side of my shoulder but that's that's the worst one yeah other other than that like little finger injuries a few little achy elbows and stuff but nothing nothing too major touch wood yeah <laughs> but yeah yeah absolutely cover from yeah <laughs> man that's wild i can imagine a fall from 36 meters up that's crazy 36 feet yeah. Oh, yeah. Meters, yeah. Twelve meters. Yeah, that'd be thirty-nine feet. Huh? Yeah, yeah forty feet. Like something like that. Oh man, it was pretty yucky. And because, like, I work as a physio now, but like, man, I've seen a lot of people who have had very like, maybe fallen from like ceiling cavities and stuff, and have messed themselves up. So whenever I see patients who have really busted themselves, I just think, man, like, oh, I was pretty lucky there. You know? Yeah. It's a four or yeah. five story building. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Yeah massive whenever i go back there it's just like oh god it's a bit... yeah i i can't i don't know if i've blocked it from my memory or it blocked it from my memory for me probably hitting my head so hard. but yeah and yeah it was, it was funny and i was on lots of anti-seizure medication for a little while after and stuff so i was like really zonked oh, so you go to that and all the guys are making funny hey ben how come you already tied up eric i'm not yeah. I'm not falling from the base guys <laughs> yeah 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 i know i know yeah it's, it's funny though it's like um it happens so easily and then as soon as you kind of back into it you just you're back scurrying around like a chamois on the ledges and stuff you just you know you forget that it even happened and yeah now, it hasn't affected my my um i don't know how how anxious i am around the cliffs <laughs> or anything yeah yeah well Still you don't remember it so you know there you go <laughs> yeah Exactly. <laughs> I guess that helps. Yeah, yeah, it must help. <laughs> yeah, man. that's uh, that's probably the biggest blunder. Yep. <laughs> wow. So, uh, what's one of your current athletic goals? 
oh, current athletic goals, like in climbing, I've got a few routes that I want to do and just be consistent um, with getting out and trying these particular climbs, like uh, routes as in like bolted climbs, sport climbs, um, just near where I live. And they're all quite challenging. Uh, there was a project that I want to do or another climb uh, at Mount Rapleys in Victoria, but COVID, I don't know if you, you, you obviously have heard about it. Um, <laughs> we, we, we've just had um, a lockdown in place, like as the day before yesterday. So we're not really yeah. allowed to do it and stuff. So I think that might get in the way of going to Victoria in two weeks. Um, but yeah, so athletic, athletic goals would be some uh, climbs and some boulder problems for so some shorter climbs. And then obviously just training for the King Kong as well, which I wouldn't mind being able to, I don't know, lift a hundred kilos or something like that and, and on a few of the implements. But I don't know, it's, it seems like a hard task for me at the moment because I've never done much lifting stuff. And that's why I got an axle okay. um, to build up my um, my strength there. Is a hundred kilos specifically what you're shooting for on the Rolling Thunder? Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've almost lifted 94 on the Rolling Thunder. Um, but then it's a, a crusher. So in the, in the comp, the 2.25, um, isn't it? So I'm not sure how I'll go on that and how it will compare to the uh, the Rolling Thunder. But yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an, eighth, it's an eighth of an inch smaller in diameter. The Rolling sure. Thunder is two and three eighths. And the crusher is heavier in the hand because it's a solid metal uh, apparatus, mm -hmm. whereas the Rolling Thunder has the plastic. And the crusher tends to roll a little better because they have bearings in it as opposed to it just yeah. being, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah fully, yeah. But I don't know. I'll see how it goes. Yeah, that, that's the goal. Like, trying to pluck pluck some numbers from thin air, really. <laughs> see how it goes. But, yeah, I've got the, um, the crushers on order. Apparently, it's in the Cincinnati Post Hub right now. So Nice. Did you make your <laughs> axle? No, no. I just got an ATX one, which is, like, okay. just one... Um, a few guys that I chat to um, had, and it was easy. Yeah, I don't have a welder or many skills, <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> I just hadn't seen the ATX axle before. You haven't? No. -uh. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I'll show you. It has these little? Can you see it? Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Has these little white marks down it? It's quite nice. ATX. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. No, that's pretty cool. Like, um, it's fun, fun to play with. I was playing around with some um, uh, thumbless one-handed lifts the other day, which were really fun. It's quite, like, wrist intensive. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. We have a few different axles. We definitely enjoy that. That one's a lot, that one's powder coats. It's a lot like our Titan axle. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't have the knurling or whatever. Exactly. Yeah, no, it's uh, good. what are you lifting on that thing now? Um, I think I don't I don't know actually. I think I've, my maximum is just what I've done with one arm, which is like maybe I think I did ninety kilos with a thumb the other day, um, with, with one hand, and then I almost did it one one hand without a thumb. I kind of got it up and it was kind of woo wobbled, wobbled out of me. But yeah, I'm not sure what that is in pounds. Do you know? Yeah, pounds. almost 200 pounds. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I haven't actually, put, like I said, I haven't really done much in the way of barbell lifting, so I'm just taking it slow because I think the temptation is to, um, oh, you just get excited. You think, oh, what else can I lift? But it's at the sacrifice for um, of the, say, my back, for instance. I don't want to yeah. chuck hurt my back and um, or anything like that. So I'm just taking it easy and building up some conditioning with some of that um, more just raw weight that isn't isn't grip intensive because um, I find that my grip yeah. um, goes all right but uh yeah oh my battery is a little bit my batteries said 20 percent I might need to go inside and put the battery on charge in a couple of minutes but we'll just see how we all go right. yeah um, um yeah, yeah it's kind of like what we had to do a little bit with uh, building up on the axle as well we jumped into grip without having like a huge deadlifting foundation at all and yeah. we quickly got our axle right up to where our deadlift was. And then we started to realize, well, you know, we're actually doing a deadlift when we're lifting on the axle now. So maybe we should start to realize that and train properly. Yeah. 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 Fully. Hey. Yeah. That's it. Like, I, I think the well, first yeah, we're only working our hands. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. Fully. 
the first couple of months I was like, oh, yeah, I can kind of feel that my back is working pretty hard. I think, yeah, need, need, it, need to give it some loving as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That's exactly where we were, exactly where we're at. We just got, you know, now we finally have a good power bar and some straps and we're ready to do some heavy deadlifts and oh, build up yeah. the back so that when we actually lift on the axle, we're not, you know, at 90% of our max or whatever. Yes, jacking your pony for sure. It's yeah, it, easy thing to not do. I think if if you if you're coming from a different sport into grip, you know. Yeah, um, especially if that sport led you to a decent grip foundation without you having to do a ton of uh, heavy weight lifting, like yes. grappling. There's there's a lot of exercises in grappling that actually lead to decent grip work without having yeah. to do a whole lot of heavy weight lifting. So, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. Obviously, that's the case in climbing. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And I, I try to avoid stuff with my legs. So, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Like, uh, yeah. You don't want to so, make those heavy. It's harder exactly. to climb. Hey, what was that? I said you don't want to make the legs heavy. It's harder to climb. No way. Yeah, you cut loose. Your feet come off, and you say, "Whoop!" As <laughs> yeah. you go. No, yeah, it's good. But you know, strong back, and you know. Is, is would will come in handy but yeah it's just where where do you spend all your time it's hard to know where to spend your time with your training and um prioritize stuff sometimes so i just prioritize you know my arm and my core like you know doing some bar and lever stuff yeah 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 absolutely mm. um so what are some lifestyle habits that you subscribe to that help the average person at home get fit um Trying to train as much as I can. Trying to, um, oh, what's if I say one, I'll, I'll probably say, oh no, but I, I forgot about that last night. Say, for instance, I try to drink too much alcohol, try to eat healthily um, as much as I can. A few, like, a few people I know have had some like health kind of issues lately that have been down to how they kind of maybe you know, how much exercise or what they eat, you know, um, and, and sort of have prompted me to take measures to, you know, make sure I'm, I'm doing things healthily. Cause I think, um, bad habits definitely catch up with you, but good habits, you know, do as well. So just trying to be consistent with some good eating and exercise habits. Um, trying not to drink too much. Um, yeah, yeah. And just trying to find out or find what you enjoy doing. So like, say gripping, ah, I, I really enjoy gripping. Great. Like, let me get into that more or, or trying to, trying to figure out what inspires you is often the, the challenge, I think, isn't it? Like to, um, being active and, 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 uh, yeah. Having a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah. I hundred percent agree with that. It doesn't matter how silly it is or whatever you're doing. You know, if you like, riding your bicycle or you like, you know, scootering around or rolling blading or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as it's, yeah. you know, if you like dancing every morning or whatever, as long as it gets you moving, that's what's important. Yeah. Exactly. Like bowling or CrossFit or horseshoe flinging, you know, yeah, it's exactly. like, yeah, it gets you off the couch and out in the sunshine. And, you know, you know, you never horseshoe horseshoe flinging might lead to horseshoe breaking then it might lead to nail bending and then grip sports and then powerlifting then all of a sudden you've gone down this fitness rabbit hole just by being open to to doing something yeah yeah it's, <laughs> amazing. it's amazing how something that's so small like gripping can lead you into well if my leg was a little bit stronger if i had better footing i might be able to put more pressure into this gripper and close it a little better you know so yeah, you're now doing calf exercises to make your gripper stronger something weird like that but yeah, you know yeah. get you there yeah yeah exactly 100 percent. yeah so um i think being yeah open to the benefits of it and and not being um uh yeah i don't know just letting it happen to a degree but yeah yeah um, <laughs> it's hard to hard to come up with something really um inspired <laughs> <laughs> really? so have you stumbled upon any unique training methods that seem to be unconventional that have greatly benefited your training in in gripping or climbing and either uh, <clears throat> well yeah my i guess what what i thought um what what 
really got me into the gripping little rabbit hole was a friend that works at the physio clinic that I, I work at called Jaden. He was a powerlifter and I had um, one of those captains of crush. I bought um, when I worked down the mountain a bit, I had to commute for work and I bought the captains of crush number two thinking, oh, I'll just smash out some reps on this while I'm in the car and get some, you know, conditioning done, at least at something. And I couldn't crack it, like I couldn't close it to save my life. And then Jaden, when I started um, working up closer to home, because he's a powerlifter, he just picked it up and was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, ah, oh. he's 100 kilos or a bit over 100 kilos. So he's way bigger than me. But um, uh, I was like, oh, what is it that he's doing that's able to make his hand close like that? And I, you know, kind of thought, oh, it's all this like incidental gripping. He's not into axles or anything or Saxon bars, but um, just all this incidental crushing that he's doing yeah. on his back all the time. I thought, Absolutely. okay, regard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, a guy with a 600 pound deadlift has a really good grip automatically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah, uh, not. Yeah, and um, and I thought, oh, shit, it's like he's 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 loading his hand up, and sure, he's not. His body weight doesn't really matter for him because he's not hanging off stuff. But what I thought was like, oh, if I can subject my body to you know more load and and. Um, but in a climbing context, so keeping my feet off the ground, not necessarily loading the rest of my body, but but loading up hard. So say, I don't know, if my fingerboard's just above me here. And and so I um, I started adding like a lot of weight. So I, I was building up on oh, his Svetlana, prompted me to buy Svetlana, my 92 kilo kettlebell. Whoa, <laughs> that's a <laughs> monster to- kettlebell. Yes, yeah, massive. Um, it's ridiculous, I, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's good. It's 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 um nice when it's tied around your waist as well, um, <laughs> and you're hanging off. But um, but yeah, so it, he he kind of inspired me to um um dump dump some extra weight on my on myself as opposed to just body weight because my body's um kind of used to you know hanging or yeah. my fingers are my body weight, so I just wanted to kind of shock the system a little bit not necessarily shock any of the ligaments or pulleys or tendons but um too too much but um yeah so that that was the thing that's in the last year i've been playing around with a lot and um yeah it's it's been been effective i think you know really and it's it's been a nice way of kind of varying the stimulus i used to train one arm hangs with body weight or a little bit of assistance actually taking a bit of body weight off but now this time i'm doing two arm hangs with way way more weight more rest generally as well um and quite often I'll, I'll start off as a bit of a pyramid so i'll start off with maybe 20 kilo vest put another vest on another vest then start adding some plates or a kettlebell and build up to almost 100 kilos and then when i've really maxed out for that session i'll start removing weight so on a on a given edge for instance like if i'm holding my hand like like that i'll have gone maybe 10 10 sets or so with a fair fairly decent rest like two minutes rest in between or three minutes um but i've done 10 of them building up from 20 kilos extra weight to you know i may maybe not 90 in that hand position but 80 and then back down in like five or 10 kilo increments yeah yeah so that, that's that's kind of probably the thing that i've been really psyched on lately is adding adding weight in a kind of trying to pretend like I'm powerlifter but doing um <laughs> doing it in a, phys- uh, in a in a fingerboarding climbing context yeah with with climbing specific like kind of hand positions as well you know awesome. yeah I, I don't yeah. know how many powerlifters can put on 90 kilos and hang from a fingerboard that's for sure yeah yeah it's pretty different that's <laughs> different insane. yeah most Which of them already I- weigh what he weighs with 90 kilos out of that Oh, oh, oh. From fingerboard. <laughs> that, that guy that did the pull up on the golden potatoes yeah um uh, far out Ooh, 150 yeah. kilo man it's, and, and it was a good quality rep i, I remember thinking it was pretty yeah cool. it was it was very strict yeah jason yeah, yeah. dingy he is a monster in the heavyweight grip division he, yeah. he's pushing towards several uh things that nobody else has done before yeah 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 no, that's cool and, and that's what very what's strong cool. dude yeah it's 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 one thing that's really cool is you just see so many different types of people hey you know and 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 this 
his his strength can or what he does for training can inspire someone who's half the size of him you know <laughs> it's oh it's yeah awesome. for sure and, and, and you know you can water down some of the stuff he does and learn how to become a lot more powerful just by watching what yeah. he's doing like we watched him uh he was the first one we saw doing bottom-up bench press on a three-inch axle and we oh. started bench pressing on a three-inch axle and yeah the fail point is in your wrists you know yeah. instead of it being in your chest so it's just a great workout yeah, for sure. Yeah, I saw that. Some, it's, yeah, it's it's rad. Hey? Yeah. Three inch axle would be sweet. I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. If you have giant hands, it'd be great. I mean, you know, I only have seven and a half inch hands, so for me, two and a half inch axle is good. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I think when I got the axle, I was like, oh, it's pretty narrow, isn't it? But yeah, a three inch axle would be sweet. Mm. I've got it's, a four inch pressure coming though as well from um, that bastard. Which would be nice. sweet. Yeah, I'm starting to see how that feels. So um, yeah. other than if you were going to compete in grip, another fan question we got in was uh, hey, where did you find when you started dabbling around with grip stuff, where did you find you were weakest and you were most powerful considering your climbing background? Like how did that transfer into grip? Where are your gaps and where are your strengths? Oh, yeah. So I think I think my, um, my strengths – oh, oh, my – I'll grab the tato. Yeah, like so, my strengths say were when 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 you're using the the first joint or two of the fingers as opposed mm -hmm. to the whole hand. Like my my hand and wrist, like that, maybe were weaker than oh, hundred percent were weaker than like say you know like the thumbless potato, like stuff like that is is comes more naturally to me because that's what I've kind of dialed in with climbing. Um, so that was that was more a strength. Say like the finish ball thing that is in the competition this year again. Like that's like a lot of um, flexion at the end joint of the finger or thumb, whatever the case may be. And that that kind of thing came naturally to me. Um, stuff like the little big horn or, or fatter grips that you have to really kind of cock your wrist mm -hmm. um, have taken a bit more practice. And like say you know rolling thunder and stuff like. I have an okay baseline at it, but um, but it's not like, yeah, just just keeping the wrist a bit more neutral, that kind of thing, that inch inch dumbbell idea of of keeping the wrist a little bit cocked, um, yeah, yeah, it's taken a bit more work. <laughs> have you got to try an inch dumbbell yet? No, no, not yet. Like we have, um, I think I was mentioning the other day, but like um, Tom, one of the guys, got Joe's inch mold. And took it to the foundry in Sydney, and uh, but yeah, they haven't they haven't made them yet. So hopefully, hopefully they do. Like we've we've kind of paid for them, or I've I've given Tom money for it anyway. So. Well, that's <laughs> awesome. Hopefully. Yeah, you'll be seeing them soon. Then that's cool. I hope so. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be sweet. I initially I thought, oh, you know, I don't I don't need something like that, but um, I don't know. It was a good opportunity to get something really funky and unique. Yeah. So, um, and, and, obviously, one of the other big climbers in the grip world is uh, Gil Goodman, the guy that owns uh, Barrel Strength Systems. Oh, is he a climber? I didn't know he was a climber. Yeah, he came from climbing, and uh, he developed the flask. That was one of the most popular things he ever developed, big pinch device. Yeah, and it yeah. was because he said his pinch was just not that great coming from climbing. He needed yeah. to work that up was the thumb and the yeah. pinch. So I want to yeah. know, like, how's your pinch strength? How's your thumb and pinch strength? Yeah, yeah, I was just going to say that actually. It's um that that was the other thing because there's um again the two clans in the AGC are really turbo that, that flat pinch, hey. Like so, I, I've got I got some new plates the other day, and I got these ones because they have like the little hub and stuff like that. Also because they have the flat back, mm -hmm. and I haven't been able to get a flask. But yeah, I find the flask kind of style grip um quite hard. Yeah, um. And and some people can lift fifty kilos. I'll show you my my simulator actually. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I made a, a little there flask a little yeah. while we, ago. We made one just about like that too. Yeah, uh, that's perfect. <laughs> Although that's Laminate. slick as that's slick as ever, man. Sorry, you no, you, that is slick. There's no texture on that. That is slick. Oh no, yeah, it's like um, made from offcuts from the kitchen. Like, yeah. Uh, not vinyl, what, what laminex or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, that's slick. I ask, but um, yeah, the guy from the um Australian website Grip and Lift hasn't had them in in stock for like the whole year, pretty much. So 
yeah, I haven't been able to um, get one. But yeah, no, I'll, I've been trying to get better at that sort of thing, like this kind of duckbill platypus grip. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because that in, in climbing, you don't really pinch like that. You'll pinch, like, say you crimp your fingers up. Yeah, yeah. And that that um, was way stronger than than that. Like, you know, you can get your whole hand on like that. But I don't know. I think the, the little muscles in your hands, like the lumbricals and stuff, all the muscles that do that just weren't used to doing it for, in, in me. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of um, long holds, holds for time um, in that kind of flask style. Yeah, I think it has like, to do with, like, locking your fingers. Because I noticed that a big, fat, wide grip, I can pinch yeah. a lot more than this this duckbill grip, and yeah. I think with the crimping, you're also you're kind of like locking your fingers, and you get a yeah. lot more power than if you're kind of just placing your yeah. hand. For sure. Yeah, I think I think all those joint kind of um, differences make a big difference when you're kind of loading up, hey, uh, the weight. And yeah, no, that is that is one thing I, I've been trying to get better at, <laughs> but and it's been getting better, like doing lots of holds and. Um, I would just try and, what was I doing? I've got my 10 kilo plates and I was trying to hold them together. Um, so 20 kilos total for a minute. And then I built up to 15 kilos or two 15 kilos for not, not a minute, but maybe 30 or 40 seconds or something like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's pretty good. Yeah. I'm trying to it's get nice. uh, two 15 kilos. That's 233 pound plates. We're working on two thirty five pound plates. That's very close. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's fun. <laughs> nice going to sleep at night with all these different muscles that are smoked you know like i've never like just adding adding all the extra weight the grabbing grabbing the different implements like i feel like my forearms just working so much harder than it used to with the oh, old yeah. route well i'm sure yeah. you do a lot of extension or training right oh i i do i do a bit of curls like extension curls and stuff no, i mean yeah. for the fingers extension or training for the fingers yeah, no, nah, I've never really done much. Hey, yeah. Okay, that's what Gil, Gil said when he got when he went from climbing into grip that he would yeah. go to sleep at night and then he'd wake up with his hand just numb and fried and acting all kinds of weird. And yeah. I don't know if you've ran into that yet, but yeah, if you don't do it much extension or training, you definitely have to add it in. Yeah, so, yeah, that's no, like, like these I, kind of guys. What is it? The stretchy things. Yeah, yeah. I always find uh, I, I I've done a bit of that with elastic band. I'll show you. I'll show you my my invention though. Have you, have you guys seen this one? No, I this, haven't this, seen that yet. No, but I I'm seeing exactly how it works. Yeah, yeah. It's like so. A, what I do, what we do is I just have a uh, like an old uh, five pound protein tub. Oh yeah, yeah. And I just have lead shot in the bottom of it. I just add yeah. more lead shot, and then same same kind of thing. I stick my hand in it, pick it up. It's perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's a great yeah. Great idea. Sure. I like um, that cup that, idea. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. This, this is like a um a post cap, um like yeah. for posts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's good. So I was thinking reverse end cap for PVC pipe or something. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's it's um, metal. I, initially, I bought it because I thought, oh, this will make a nice wide hub if I can weld it. And then I picked it up like that, and I thought, hey, that's a good extension thing. And it's quite hard, like, to add like even you know two kilos onto it. It's like wow. <laughs> yeah for sure absolutely yeah sweet but yeah so i, I play extension um or, or or training the extensors um yeah i do and i do a lot of like radial and ulnar deviation as well which is kind of training them too you know yeah. say with like, edges and stuff I, I got a new sledge the other day but with that you know oh yeah mark that and everything <laughs> 12 pounds it's quite heavy <laughs> but yeah yeah, Super twelve nice. pounds is pretty heavy. It took me a long time to work up to doing a full lever on a twelve pound sledge. Yeah, yeah. I, I, well, I, I tried it at the session the other day. I was like, almost smashed my brain in. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yeah, yeah. It's funny. <laughs> it goes up quick though, especially I think yeah. when you're a climber. I think it might even go up quicker because I know Gil he exploded up really quick in his wrist and his thumb strength when he got into it. Um, I think that having the foundation in the other areas of your hands helps out tremendously. Because uh, yeah, so. I'm fortunate that I played with grippers for like 15 years. When I got into grip, I thought, well, this is something fun I can do when I'm in college or when I'm sitting there in between classes or when I, you know, when I can't have a gym. 
So I yeah. thought I'll throw some grippers in the backpack and I'll just carry my grippers everywhere with me. And I wound up playing with grippers for like 10 years without yeah, doing yeah. anything else in grip whatsoever. And now that yeah, I'm doing yeah. other stuff, I find that the grippers actually gave me a pretty good foundation where I'm making oh. decent gains in other areas. Yeah, I can imagine like just that, that you know, crush grip comes in handy on stuff, eh? Yeah, little big horns or, or rolly bars or flask even that yeah. movement, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just like the support finger with the uh, climbing. Gil said he mm. picked up an inch the first time he test one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's why um, I think I was on a podcast with that Tanner, Tanner guy yeah. um, from Texas. Yeah, he picked up one. Yeah, which seems to be pretty decent if you can pick up one the first time. <laughs> he picked up one the first time as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's good. So that's the, that's the group of people that Mike Wilfong's in with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because he picked up he picked up our 177 pound inch the first time that he touched it. That's oh, five right. pounds overweight too. Oh, oh, right. How many kilos is that? Is that like 80 kilos or something like that? Something like that. Yeah, something roughly. Like that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right about 80 kilos. That'd be 176 pounds. So yeah. Sweet. Yeah, it's good, eh? Yeah. Pretty turbo. <laughs> yeah, it's bigger than it's yeah. supposed to be. What's going on there? <laughs> <laughs> Now these guys are picking up two of them and walking around with them. Yeah, yeah. How fun is that? That looks cool, eh? Yeah, it's a good little farmer's walk. Oh, I was going to try the potato farmer's walk. I haven't had a chance to do that. I keep forgetting, That's a fun but... one. Yes, that is yeah. a fun one. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. Uh, weight trumps time. So if you uh, don't want to run, just do a little bit more weight and you'll win. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'll wear some steel cat boots as well. <laughs> you could also do, a, if you have two loading pins, just do the crucifix hold. That's a fun one, too. Oh, He um, is really yeah. good at static holds. What, what, what's, the, what's the Hercules? Is there, like, chains on the other side or something? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's pulling. It's like two pillars that are, yeah. you know, going to fall to the ground and you're holding them. So it's actually pulling that way outward as opposed to pulling downward. Yeah, I love that. And I love the crucifix hold. Anything I could hold with potatoes. I'm all about it. Battery hold, crucifix hold, Hercules hold. Yeah, he has yeah. crazy static upper body strength. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. it's like beyond like powerlifters that deadlift 600 pounds. It's like they come over and witness and see him do a minute long Hercules hold, and they're doing 40 seconds. And they go, "What is this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's turbo. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Everybody yeah. has their thing. They just get hey. you know. You just go somewhere else. It's no big deal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Potato's yeah, gonna yeah. rip out of your hand. You just hold it longer. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> just don't let go. <laughs> oh, it's not heavy. Exactly. <laughs> I just gotta hold it a long time. Yeah, exactly. It was like um, the chin ups on the potatoes. Is like, oh god, just have to keep squeezing. You know, it's not like a hard single rep. It's just like I just have to keep going. <laughs> you want to pick up, you know, hundred kilos or. 90 kilos on the potato. How about we just hold 50 and see how long we could do it? Hey, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it holds for time. It's rad. Like um, some of the guys in the AGC, don't. I don't think they do it that much, but I, I find it fun. Just like struggling like 45 seconds in, you're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, we, we had one of the top grip guys actually uh, giving us advice on grip now. Jed Johnson's actually uh, helping give us, giving us some good uh, programming tips and uh, – he said, man, if you aren't doing holds with your axle, he, you're not doing it right. You need to be adding those in. That is a huge yeah. deal. Yeah, yeah. And I think um, especially if, like, like for me, because I'm new-ish to the specific grip positions um, with the grip, um, yeah, I just wanted to build up. Like, I just didn't want to, like, load up my ligaments and tendons and, and things in ways that they're not accustomed to yet and just, yeah. just build up, yeah. and get some hypertrophy or whatever in the muscles, which is kind of trying – kind of happening and um not that i'm putting on pounds of muscle at all but you know just a little bit and then um yeah and playing it safe and then coming up to king kong just add more weight get get more specific to the loading that will be required for the comp whatever but yeah no i think the the holds for time are good it's like building a base you kind of have yeah. to build it yep they could exhaust your muscles in a completely different way than just failing at trying to pick it up for a whopping one second or whatever you know yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's it. And and it kind of um, makes you realize the nuances that sometimes you need to, how you need to hold it and how the, the different hand positions or finger positions can be beneficial as well. Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. It's kind of, it's funny because you're working on building up a base to get better at some of the stuff that we've used to build up a base to eventually do some of the stuff that you actually do. Because it's funny, in a yeah. couple of years into grip, a lot of guys yeah. start doing fingerboard work. Yeah, 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 yeah. The fingerboard stuff would be probably fairly handy depending on how you do it and stuff, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But obviously you can't jump into it when you're new to grip because, you know, your ligaments and tendons aren't ready for that. I've heard it, you know, even in climbing, you have to wait a few years before you really get into fingerboard stuff. Yeah, I'm definitely yeah. not grabbing a 92 kilo uh, and putting it on me and trying to hold on with fingertips, though. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not getting a 92 kilogram kettlebell anytime soon. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. All right. Yeah, hey, yeah, for sure. You want to um, you want to definitely take it slow and stuff. Yeah, so, especially in the positions that get your fingers up in like higher, like um, higher positions like that can be quite stressful for the the ligaments in your fingers that hold your um, tendons to the bone. Yeah. So I imagine what actually holds you back probably in in pinch is just your thumb. You got to imagine your fingertips are strong for it. It's got to be all the thumb pressure. Yeah, yeah. I think I think um, gen <clears throat> generally. From a, a climber's, like, people I know point of view, I'm okay on pinches. But, yeah, I, I would agree with that one. It's like, oh, I need to get my thumb cranking a bit more. Um, Have you messed because, around much with a wrist wrench? Yeah. So I made a couple. That's a, a couple fun of, one. Yeah, I love them, hey? Yeah. It's right out of the thumb and, yeah. It just annihilates your thumb, hey? Yeah, I love yeah. it. But what was I doing? I was, I was doing some deadlifts with it the other day and trying to do some pull-ups as well. I made two <laughs> try and do pull up so they swing around a little bit but um, okay we made a two hand uh, yeah. like a longer one that's a you know two hand you could use for pull ups or whatever yeah yeah i think um a guy i know rudy has a two handed one like a yeah. long one but two one handed ones um and yeah it's a little bit awkward to roll up to get it started but yeah i, I like the wrist wrench hey it's rudy's like, got some potatoes on the way to him so that would be neat to see what he does with them sorry what was that Ru rudy has some potatoes on the way to him so it'll be neat oh. to see what he does with them yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, no, I'll be, I'll be psyched. He'll probably like do a Turkish get up to a one arm pull up combo or something. <laughs> yeah, his mobility and movement is it's sick. It's yeah. definitely uh, something to aspire to be like, especially at his age. It's amazing yeah. how well he moves. Hundred percent, and he um he does a lot of it, and I because yeah, it's just, I don't think people can appreciate exactly how tough some of the stuff he does. I've been in martial arts all my life, so I know movement. You know, I know how tough mm -hmm. that is, and I used yeah. to be able to drop into the splits and then go into a W, you know, when I was younger. And now I can still kind of drop into the splits at like 3 a.m. But that guy, what he can do cold is incredible. Yeah, 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 yeah. Especially with that um, that massive kettlebell he has. He has like a 32 kettlebell that he's holding above his head. Oh, mm -hmm. that's my battery. I might. Um, can you guys still see? Yeah, cool. I'll just go yeah. inside. Um, I'm just going to walk you through my garden. The girls are at home, but... <clears throat> Yeah, my battery is just on ten percent. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, and Rudy's Rudy's gym is all in the um in his backyard as well, which is sweet. Hey, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, it's good, and that's why it's like awesome. You just kind of get a a real mix of um uh, exercise potential, you know, that you can get involved with. Um, can I use the charger? Sweet. Well, and you get a sense that he really knows the knowledge behind why he's doing what he's doing. Yeah. 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 Did you say he, he does know? No, you get, you get that knowledge from him that he really knows the why he's doing what he's doing and what yeah. it contributes to him. You know? Yeah. You get a real yeah. For that with the way he moves. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. Like you said, like, um, not, not that he's old as such, but he's like, um, it's, um, man, every person, um, above the age of 55 worked on that kind of stuff you know there'd be a lot more healthy people around <laughs> for yeah. sure yeah do you follow a uh, strongman archaeology oh i do yeah yeah another guy that yeah really knows how to move well and has a guy a lot of positive information out there about that yeah yeah exactly yeah some funky variations like those big um uh the deadlifts with your arms way out wide holding the plates and stuff yeah for sure and that the bent presses and whatnot, they really help up with, you know, breaking up issues that you have in your, in your upper body and thoracic yeah. area. Yeah. 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 Cool. yeah. No, nah, it's good. Hey, good. It's, uh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's funny to have like a, um, 
an interest that is completely um, based on what I've seen on Instagram. <laughs> right, right. So if you can uh, start your training all over again with the knowledge you have today, what would you do differently and why? Uh, what would I do differently? I would, um, I remember I, I was listening to Adam's um, podcast and he said he wouldn't do anything different because without doing it the way he's done it, he wouldn't be where he is now. And so, um, and he's happy with that. Um, I don't know. I think um, maybe I would have just been more consistent with some training stuff, maybe, um, you know, consistent. I mean, say fingerboarding and, and just uh, following, letting myself follow my nose with, with how to set up sessions as well, as opposed to just going, oh no, the internet or, or the training program says this, that's what I'm going to do. Um, and, and allowing myself to play around a little bit more, which is, you know, last year has just been playing around a lot of the time, like <clears throat> with those pyramids, with the heavy kettlebells and, you know, um, yeah, just, just varying, varying it up and being willing to mix it up and play and see what works and yeah. Yeah, yeah, I and, think that's that's good, right. especially once you've gotten into it a tiny bit, for sure. At yeah, first, yeah. you have to follow a program, but then once you know what you're doing, yeah, yeah, you and really that, find that's, out what works for you. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Um, what else would I change? I don't know. Yeah, it's it's kind of funny, isn't it? It's kind of makes sense what Adam was saying. It's like, oh well, you know, I wouldn't be here if I hadn't done it a certain way, and I'm happy enough with. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, if you're happy with what you've accomplished, and there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe I've gotten. Maybe I could have gotten an inch dumbbell twenty years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think is the most important piece in your home gym, and why? The most important piece in my home gym. Hmm. It would have to be. Oh, oh, I wish I was still up there because I could show you, but um. Maybe maybe a couple of edges that I've had, like that are benchmark bits of wood that I've been hanging on and training on for a long time. So just like random things that I've made for specific goals, say for um, a one joint um, edge where I have to hold it with all my fingers up like this, with my thumb over. Um, maybe they've, they've been really important for my training and climbing. So as, as simple as they are, they're literally just a, a bit of wood. Um, that's probably some of the most important things. Um, more, more recently, like the, all the grip stuff that I've gotten, like I've, I've felt really psyched the last year, get playing around with that. And so it's kept, kept the fires burning. Um, and and <laughs> your, your potatoes, because I, I used to despise pull-ups and despise maximum pull-ups. And then I've just like, just with that little competition, it's prompted me to go, oh, no, I need to be able to do more of that. I need, I can feel how that works and relates to my climbing. Like the project that I was talking about in Victoria, like at the hard part, my arms would just be like oh, fading out. And I was like, oh, I need to, need to get more, more turbo in my, my arms. And that's exactly as soon as I did my first set on the potatoes to, to max double up, um, you know, two arm pull-ups. I was just like, oh, this is what I needed. And it's like engaging my thumb as well. And it's just like, so yeah, um, they've been fun to play around with as well, you know, and, and, and that's like, as soon as I played on that, I was like, great, I want to have a, I want to be able to do 30 pull-ups on this. Um, and, and that will relate to this project and that will relate to me doing that project, you know, and getting that done. So, that's yeah, awesome. they've, they've been super fun to play with. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. one thing you mentioned, uh, popped into my mind one of the craziest lifts in grip, in grip, and that's the one finger lifts. And we see guys do uh, one finger, middle finger lifts. And mm -hmm. I think guys have done over 400 pounds just with their middle finger. So mm -hmm. they'll, they'll take like a ring and they'll put it around their middle finger and mm -hmm. then they'll wrap, they'll wrap some uh, leather around that ring and then just lift with only the middle finger. Oh, is that how it's done? With So, so it's almost like you, like your your hand wraps in on a barbell, but it's just a single finger, and then then it's wrapped. No, no, there's a wrap around around the ring, and then that's just padding. So basically, like there's padding on this part of the finger here, <laughs> and then it, it goes into a ring that then lifts the weight. So you have padding yeah. on this this section here. But yeah, still, yeah, yeah. my question is like, 
what kind of injuries have you ran into with sing, single finger stuff? And what is your opinion on the, the single finger stuff that people do? Oh, oh. I'm sure I think that comes into climbing a little bit as well, because yeah. almost never is, does anybody recommend you do something with a single digit? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. It is, it is a crazy thing to think of doing. It is against any any kinesiologist, any hand therapist. Anybody's going to tell you this joint's connected, this joint, this joint's connected, this one, and don't you go messing around with one at one time. I uh, no, I I'd, I'd say to hell with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm all about the single finger stuff. The, um, I do. You guys know what a Dupuytren's contracture is? Uh -huh. It's when you can't. Yeah. You've got no, one. It's when you can't open up this part of your hand, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like um, that this the the sheath of the tendon kind of gets all scarred up and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's from like yeah, no Vikings and stuff like that. But um, no, I, I I was playing around with some single finger lifts the start of the year, but pinky lifts because it's a, a a classic kind of um. Yep, it yeah. is a classic feat. The pinky pull up. Yeah, the pinky pull up, and and some climbers in the eighties, it was like a ah oh, man it blew my mind it's like how, how can they do a one-arm pull-up on a pinky and so just getting into the the grip stuff more recently yeah, who's the guy i'm thinking of the italian uh, guy that does all the pull-ups at titan or Ty, uh, what's his name oh Ta 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 the italian butterfly that guy yeah his, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah his pull-ups with pinkies are insane his pull up all his pull-up stuff is absolutely insane yeah exactly yeah and and like um yeah i, I, I was psyched on training for that so i was training for it some pinky pinky pull-ups and stuff but yeah no i think that the single yeah. finger dead is awesome I was, I was actually playing with something as we were talking up there like you know those those curly railroad tie things that kind of clamp the railway line down mm -hmm. those they're funny little circle things but they're, they're a nice radius to do a single finger lift on um i was going to show you but 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 um but yeah so I, i'm i'm psyched on some of that do a single finger lift on that that's crazy <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah, not in a nine point one um, mil um, rope is good doubled over as well. But earlier in the year, I actually tore my Jupiter's contracture doing um, a, a PB lift on my um, uh, little finger. It was quite funny. It's on my Instagram. It's like a, a cluster of um, weights and, and an anvil, and you can just hear. A, and initially, I thought it was my lumbar, but it wasn't. It was just the um, the scar tissue. So it settled oh, down. Nice. A week, yeah, yeah, but yeah, no, I'm all about it because because Louis Sear didn't he lift like 200 and something 52 pounds on a single finger in yep. 18 or something? Yeah, he was one of the first uh big single finger lifters, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, nah, I'm all about it, yeah, it's good. <laughs> what were you lifting with your pinky that day for your PB? Se 75 kilos, yeah, <laughs> uh -huh. that is crazy, man, yeah, yeah. I, I'd done, um, oops, sorry. Um, 72 kilos the session before I think I thought oh great we're getting up to body weight um, you know once I can deadlift my body weight then I'll transition to doing doing some hangs um, but yeah then I then I kind of tore it so <laughs> it's funny Pinky hangs, huh? yeah 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 it's fun it, it's kind of um it's pretty interesting it's like um like with the the flask or whatever you feel, really feel feel that that part of your body like working hard and think, oh god that feels good and same with the pinky obviously you feel the pinky but you feel like this part of the hand yeah. working hard and it's just like ah you know i'm isolating something here and that that's not a bad thing you know and it's just that's needs awesome. to be at the right level as well i think a lot of the time not just yeah exactly i think that's it is you have to really slowly push yourself up on that i remember i was watching um one guy I watched go up on that single finger lifts was alexander's ass and i think he was going over 400 pounds with uh single finger middle finger lifts and um oh i can't remember the guy's name um there's a steel bender um steel bender slash strongman that's done like uh five or six hundred pounds with a single finger single yeah. finger with like three people standing in a cage and then he's standing oh. up above the cage on a platform and like single finger lifting stanless that's his name stanley steel uh, that's Stanley what he goes Steel. by. Stanley Steele. Stanless Steele is uh, his strongman name. But yeah, I remember seeing him with, that must have been over 500 pounds that he lifted. They were like all standing three people in a shark cage. And he had this yeah. single finger bolt type setup and he just lifted them all. Oh, man. 
yeah, that's spring. live weight too that's not like dead weight you know so there's like yeah. you know they're moving around or shuffling or whatever you know yeah yeah, yeah. oh savage savage <laughs> Just incredible yeah. so that's the kind of crazy stuff you see in grip and yeah i yeah. think climbers deal with you know that kind of torque i think they deal with more torque than most ever most grippers will ever see when it comes to finger mm -hmm. torque mm -hmm. um only the grippers that really go to that level the finger the one yeah. finger lifts and that crazy stuff really feel that kind of torque yeah and i almost think that it's like climbers have the most finger torque and then arm wrestlers kind of deal with the most wrist torque yeah yeah exactly man i've been watching a bit of the arm wrestling stuff lately and just seeing if it could relate to um any any of the training stuff and yeah, it looks it yeah. looks pretty sad. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'd imagine there's there's a decent amount of stuff in there that could wind up helping grip. You know, I mean, if you can hold your arm in this position and pull yourself up on a ledge, you may be able to get around something someone else can't. Yeah, hundred percent. And like really compressing the compression kind of see see um uh like bits of bits of rock say when you're hugging hugging the side of a boulder or whatever, and you have to keep your wrist in a certain position. Hundred percent. Yeah, it's good. Um, lots of the sky's the limit there's so much out there to um play with it's exciting <laughs> it is it's really exciting um because grip for the longest time was kind of held in the dark um yeah everybody kind of hunted around not really knowing what to do because there were a lot of guys still making money off of it almost uh, all the way up until the 90s we saw guys tearing cards you know i mean there's they, they still exist the you know sideshow type of um, circus strongman type of stuff still exists, but it's dying out and it's not as common as it used to be. So you don't mm -hmm. see as many guys making their living off of tearing cards or bending nails or, you know, bending horseshoes or whatever. So now they're yeah. finally getting the knowledge out there of how to do it. It's finally being shared. And I think yeah. that was a big part of it is the knowledge wasn't shared for the longest time. So now it's yeah. fun to go, hey, all right, how do I get my hands strong like these guys did for the past hundred years? Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's it's Brad, hey. Um yeah, sorry, I'm just setting my phone up. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, um, I guess the internet and stuff, there's a whole lot more information out there. You can just dial it in and go, oh, how do I do this? And it's and it's there. And then people aren't necessarily, um, sorry, my dog's trying to get into the room. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's not something that, uh, sorry, I lost my train of thought, Patch. Thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you can. It's it, all the knowledge is out there, so you can kind of find it. It's not like squirreled away in some circus tent. Yeah. Was the old time strongman a popular thing in Australia as well? Uh, no, no. I think whenever I thought about it, I thought of it in a kind of an American kind of context. Yeah, like um, um but I've been watching a few of those things lately. Like it, in it's it's very European as well, like Sandow and yeah, George Ackenschmidt and on those guys like doing. And Apollon and stuff, or Apollon, or, you know, um, yeah, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think, I don't know if it's as big in Australia, like, there's strongman competitions in Australia, but it's not, like, historically like that, it's not like, oh, you know, I don't know, whatever, the swagman lifted the, the jumbuck over his head 12 times by the billabong or anything like that, yeah. you know, <laughs> old stories like that. Not like Louis Sear holding their yeah. whole wide sails or whatever the, the horses together. Yeah. yeah. I figure you guys at least you have to have some stones of strength over there or something, man. How many how many yeah. stones you guys have, you know? Yeah, we've got stones. I've got a bit of a collection of stones in the the garden as well, actually. Because actually a nice. friend of mine, um, ten years ago, he was getting into like grippers and, and stone lifting. Like he had those um the Steve Jack videos. Do you remember those um like okay. cellar dwellers? And Kiva Helen or whatever it was, I think it's Kiva Helen, where he goes to Iceland and tries to lift the goat pen. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Husafell stone. And mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, yeah. So I've got his collection of rocks in my garden actually, and I found a few around the place at certain bouldering areas that we kind of play around with and stuff. That's and, um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love the stone lifting, like the um, the Scottish the rogue do those documentaries, like the the Stone Land. The yeah. Fulster the Vatatoris or whatever the Spanish or the Basque one is. Really, I love it. Yeah. I'm really surprised you guys don't have some legend of like a kangaroo wrestler or something that had to hold them down or something yeah. have some insane grip. Exactly. Yeah, well, m most people grow up being able to wrestle crocodiles, so kangaroos are just pretty pretty stock standard. 
Makes sense. I figure they kick a lot harder than Crocs, though. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They can kick. Yeah, they can definitely kick. Yeah. Crocodiles. Crocodiles are pretty weak when it comes to their, like, pincer grip. So you can kind of. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can just hold their nose closed with a key pinch, from what I understand. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Wrap, wrap there. You You can choke them out with their own tail. That's how I got the last one. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> well, crocodiles always walking in your house, you know. Yeah, yeah, but but you know, like I'm pretty new to it all as well, so I maybe maybe there's stuff I'm missing as well. Like I maybe there's a a secret Australian scene that I'm not privy to. But um, as far as I know, um, you know, Joe and and those guys are the the main people that do the grip in Australia, at least. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I think there's there's nail benders. I, there's only oh, okay. a couple of weeks that I realized nail bending was a thing. Um, and uh, yeah, it's funny. And card tearing, that Timmy guy that you interviewed the other day. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, tearing cards. And I was like, wow, card tears. <laughs> but now I'm psyched on it because it, I can see how, how hard it would be. And yeah. Yeah, it's yeah absolutely. a fun one. It is a fun yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Was, I was actually meant to get some cards this weekend, but I forgot. So try and get some. Yeah, I like that one because you can get cards anywhere. So, like, if you want to, you know, go to a gas station, get a deck of cards and show someone, hey, I can tear these in half. Here, you try the same deck. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally, I think so, too. Yeah, it's fun. Fun. Yeah, it's like, um, yeah, yeah. I was just showing a few friends, actually, the other day, my little big horn and my grab ball and stuff like that. And they were psyched. They are like, oh, yeah, how much can you lift on this? Oh, my God, that's so heavy. Ah, Like, you know, just people are interested in it. And, yeah. Exactly. So what advice do you have for the average person trying to get fit and healthy? Um, Just start and expect it to not always necessarily be easy, intuitive or or, or feel great all the time. But if you just just start at something and and let it let it guide you uh, wherever it wants to guide you, you know, and wherever you find that inspiration as well. It's easy to just be like, oh, no, I. To get fit, I need to go to the gym. I don't like the gym. Oh, well, I'm not going to do it. You know, there's always a way to, you know, achieve some sort of um, fitness goals or get get to a, a, a better place uh, health-wise. Uh, it's just just being open to possibilities. I think a lot of the time, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. Like, it's, that's why I spend most of my life, most of my work doing is trying to, like, figure out how someone could, make those changes like because i work as a physio um therapist so physical therapist whatever um yeah just trying to how can how can we get you doing this a little bit more doesn't have to be heaps doesn't have to be in the gym can be at home or it can be with your friend or how can we figure it out and just grinding it out and um and seeing what works for the individual you know because and i think if people you know appreciate ah i'm an individual you know I need to do it my way, the way that works for me. And there's a way out there. I just need to figure it out. Hence, I need to start. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. <laughs> do you have any questions for us, Couch Potato Strong, before we let you go? Oh well, I was um I heard word on the street you're gonna make a um an onion. Is that the case? <laughs> I'm working on something. He's working on yeah. something. I had so, some uh, ideas. Yeah. I was I was in the supermarket. I think I um after i went sh- to the shops after listening to joe's podcast and um and i grabbed an onion and i thought yeah that would be cool that feels good you know <laughs> it's nice. like slick and curvaceous yep. and hard um yeah it, it'd be a weird shaped blob but yeah. since an onion has layers i thought it'd be cool if you could open up your onion and have some kind of finger advice our device in the middle too so you can do two oh. different lifts with your onion uh, yeah so totally. blob on one side and then it peels back somehow yeah. and you Ooh. can use it for fingertip lifts or something of that nature yeah totally yeah yeah i wonder how that could work it could be almost like um like a blossoming flower that re- reveals the the pinky deadlift loop <laughs> yeah, bloom an onion and there's a pinky deadlift in there <laughs> something yeah. of that nature whatever grows out of the garden knows what it's going to be so yep. i've been planting yeah. different things to see if i could get a golden onion 
yeah, and just just feed the garden and uh, see what pops up. That's the one. That's right. Maybe, Absolutely. Maybe a bunch of dandelions. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> yeah, that and the um, – we're going to try to get the concrete uh, blob trainer out there too as well. Oh, uh, that looks sweet. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Because there's just yes, a lot of areas where it's hard to get a blob. Tight. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, and the shape on some other trainers isn't right. It isn't the it isn't the proper blob shape, and I think we got it pretty pretty accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot of people lifting blobs on Instagram at the moment, hey? Yeah, in, people in England. I don't know. It was yeah, just people or um, like companies brought that York stuff in back in the day or whatever it was. But I haven't seen any really Australians lifting any of them. So yeah, maybe there's a secret stash of them somewhere out west. And someone yeah, Joe's been looking for them for a long time, I guess, and they're not they're not there. Nah, if I get a no, couple of yeah. uh, concrete blob trainers down there, we could see a, a blob pull up for the first time ever. That'd be neat. Oh, yeah. Wow, that'd be sweet. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that'd be fatty palm stretcher. Yeah, that'd be wicked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're about uh, 10 centimeters just across the top, and then they bow yeah. out another two centimeters on each side, probably. Yeah, that's pretty wide, hey? Yeah. We can see, like, um, I think it was Timmy the other day lifting, lifting some, um, and he's pretty, pretty maxed out on some of them. Hey, like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. Timmy's though, he's got smaller hands though. His hands are about the same size as mine, seven and a half inch hands ish. Ah, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, fair. That's why he's the king of the hub. Yeah. Oh, is he king of the hub? Well, he's up there. He's got seventy some odd pound hub lifts. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Tim Livingston. Yeah, he's good. Giant hubless. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Tim Tim Livingston. Is that is that's not Timmy though, is it? Oh Timmy, he oh he's ridiculous. He's got yeah, he's yeah. got pretty big hands. Yeah, Timmy's ridiculous. What he can do is insane. I know who you're talking about Tim Butler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because he is astronomical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. No, Especially because he's been training through injury for the past few years. Yeah. What he's overcome yeah. and what he's accomplished is just monstrous. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah he's only those 26 guys. years old too he has some of the most he has some of the most potential of anybody in grip i think yeah 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 no pretty turbo hey yeah I I mean, he's like doing... yeah face lifting face curling blobs while lifting an inch at the same time and yeah. raises yeah, yeah. one arm fat grip pull-ups at a weight of 200 pounds yeah 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 no, you know, i'm sure you do one arm fat grip pull-ups but i mean Sure, you know how tough it'd be if you weighed 200 pounds. It's not an easy feat, especially yeah, for somebody yeah. that doesn't train climbing regularly. So, yeah, exactly. Just, just, yeah, subjects their body to that a lot of the time, and yeah, no, it's good. It's fun. Lots of. It's, it's tricky how to how to um how to structure a session when there's so many things you want to play around with. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've, these three hour long sessions lately, I've been so so smoked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah we've had to like, narrow down what we play with and make this one one day a week where we just go grip crazy we're like no this day we have to limit ourselves to this limit ourselves to this limit ourselves to this this one day though you know anything's on everything's the, on the table go ahead whatever yeah that's it hey yeah kind of it's easy to do yeah i find i find it pretty pretty smoked like going to work or whatever or if i'm going climbing i'm like, oh yeah i can feel those like those plate pinches hold for hold for times like yesterday God, or two days ago or five days ago, even, even those pull up efforts on the, on the potatoes, my biceps are pretty worked a few days later, but yeah, <laughs> good. <laughs> good feeling. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, before we let you go, do you have any other questions or comments or plugs you want to make? No, 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 it's good. I love your potato logo. Um, I've gotten lots of positive comments on it, strolling around town with it um awesome. that's great but nah, nah, i'm psyched you know i'm psyched on uh what you guys are doing it's fun it's fun and just getting podcasts of different people with different experiences uh and and bringing it all together and and getting people psyched it's making me psyched anyway <laughs> absolutely we think it's going to be a few more years before people are super comfortable just being in the gym regularly in you know, the public yeah. gyms so i think yeah. that the home gym Definitely, people need to learn how to how to build one, how to work out in it safely, and you know, learn from people that are doing it at home, that are doing really yeah. great at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and um, and that it doesn't always have to be shiny equipment. It can exactly. it can be 
a, a thing you found on a work site, you know? Yeah, or a rock. A rock. Yeah, <laughs> we're running. Perfect. We've got plenty of those. Yeah. Or a bit of ground, a bit of flat floor, yeah. you know? <laughs> nah, yeah, yeah, padded good. floor is one of my favorite things that I have in my gym. Playground. Well, the padded floor. Yeah, yeah, padded floor is one of the most favorite things I have in my gym, man. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. even a playground that people don't go to, that's also one of the best workout sites. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. It's just, it's just um, uh, reconceptualizing something that you, you associate with, you know, whatever a playground. But you think, no, this can be my gym today, you know? Exactly. That's fine. Exactly. Hmm. No, it's good. It's good. I'm sorry. All righty. Well, thanks for joining us. <laughs> oh, I think. Oh, there we are. Back. No worries. Thanks for having me. Hey. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Give us a hoi if you have any questions. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Sorry, that's something I say when I'm finishing up at work with someone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah. Likewise. Cheers. And uh, good luck in the heat. Thanks. We'll yeah. do our best. We're we'll staying yeah. inside. <laughs> you need a garden bath. I have an old bath in the garden. And I fill it with water and and get some bags of ice. It's not nothing nothing new, but it's uh it it makes a massive difference if you sit in that for. A, 10 minutes you'll feel awesome for the next two hours just nice. cycle cycle through it yeah all right good <laughs> perfect good. awesome take care Bath together and i'll see you later <laughs> take care man <laughs> <laughs> see ya <laughs>